Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce you and explain the interface of Photoshop, how it works, how the tools work, some of the how you work with it. Um, and I'm going to start by talking about uh, right here. This is the the menu bar. And the menu bar is where you click on something and you get this menu of options. Each of one of these places has, you know, all those options in its menu. Uh, this right here is the toolbar. I'm going to show you something really quick. If I double click in this part of the toolbar, it puts it in one column. If I double click again, it puts it again into two columns. If you don't have a lot of real estate on your screen, you may want to do it in two columns. But then of course you're infringing on some of the, the space right here. It makes it so the window's not as wide. Uh, so. I, right now, for the sake of this video, I am doing it in two columns. Usually when I use the full screen on my computer, I have enough space in my 1080p monitor to be able to show everything. These different tools have different options. Uh, in fact, there are more tools underneath most of these tools. So see these little arrows right here in the bottom right corner of each of these tools? If I click and hold down, it shows me other tools that are there. It'll also show me a keyboard shortcut for the tool. In this case, it's M. Now, if I click M on my keyboard, it, if I'm on another tool, it takes me to the marquee tool. This is for selecting uh, ellipses. So I can select an ellipse. If I hold down the Shift key while I'm selecting, it makes the ellipse selection circular. If I hold down the Alt key while I'm selecting, it starts creating an ellipse from the center. I'm going to show you that again. Uh, I did control D to deselect. If I hold down Alt and just start clicking and dragging, that the, where I started clicking and dragging is the center. Now, if I click outside that once, now if I click and drag, the, this, the uh, ellipse starts from the upper left hand corner of where I started. So, so that's how that works. Anytime I make a selection with the ellipse tool or the lasso tool, and then I click outside the selection, it deselects it. I can also deselect by pressing D on the keyboard, or Control D. This is a lasso tool, and it has other tools underneath it, the polygon and the magnetic lasso tool. The lasso tool is just for drawing where the arrow is. You can, I can make a selection from that, just a quick selection. If I make a selection, I'm going to grab that head. If I make a selection and use the Move tool, which is shortcut V, I can click and drag and I can move that selection. I'm going to control Z to undo that and then I'm going to deselect using control D. This is the quick selection tool. If I click and drag over something it'll quickly select areas of similar color and add them to my selection. Notice sometimes it adds areas that I don't want so I can just hold down the alt key and drag to that area and it deselects. So when you just click and drag, it selects. And with all these tools, if I want to deselect, I can hold down the Alt key, and it'll deselect the area that I click that I click and drag around on that tool. Here I'm back to my um, quick selection tools. Quick, quick selection tool is wonderful. So these right here are select and move tools. This helps me select a color. If I hold that down, I can do the eyedropper tool, and I can select a color. Watch what happens right here when I click on an area. Notice it selects that color. Wherever I click, it selects that color. All right. These down here, oh, the other thing that I need to mention. So when I select on, on a, uh, one of these tools right here, the options for the tool appear up here. So notice that this has a feather of zero pixels when I do that. If I move that, there's no, there's no feathering right there. Uh, now, if I oops, if I use that again and I tell it to have a feather of, I'm going to say like 60 pixels. Um, now, when I click and drag, and then I use the move tool and move it, notice how that's kind of fuzzy. That can come in handy sometimes. Control D to deselect. Uh, these different tools are working with the pixels. Uh, this is a brush, so if I have a brush and I start coloring right here, it colors whatever color is on. The, the top, the foreground color. I'm going to control Z to deselect that. I mean to undo that, control Z. This is the patch tool, spot healing brush. Um, in a future lesson, I'm going to show you how to use spot healing brush to, to clear up blemishes on a face. 
This is a rubber stamp tool. I'll just show you how this works really fast. I'm going to use the right bracket tool to increase the size. The right bracket key, I mean, next to the P. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click on an area, and then I'm just going to paint a ghost of this image over here. And notice as I paint that there's a crosshair that shows what it's painting from. I'm going to undo that. So that's a clone stamp tool. Uh, this is the brush, the history brush tool. So if I do something and I don't like it, I can go to the history brush tool. I'm going to make that larger. And whatever I paint over, it'll undo whatever last thing I did. And this has some really uh, advanced things you can do with it. I'm not going to show you right now. but um, This is a burn tool. This has burn and dodge. If you know anything about uh, oldie time photography, you can, if you dodge an area, it lightens it. Notice how that's lightening up the more I click. If I burn, it darkens it. So I'll darken that back up. All right. Now, uh, oh, what I did right there, this is a history button. There's a snapshot that the camera takes, I mean, the, the, the Photoshop takes whenever you first open up Photoshop. And at any point, I can take another snapshot and use it, go back to it in my history at any time. Um, all right. So th th I, that's just a few tools I'm going to show you right there. Now you should also know about the eraser tool. You can erase stuff easily. Uh, now. I'm going to move over here and show you some of these options. You already saw that this is a history brush option or just a history panel or pane. Um, this is the color. So I can I, I have this color right here that has this red, green, and blue value in it. If I want it to have lighter red, lighter green, lighter blue, notice how this changes as I move those over. If I move them all the way over to 255, it's going to be white. If I move them, as you suspect, all the way to the left, it's going to be black. Uh, these are swatches, so we can choose colors by doing swatches also. Notice that the, the other slider bar right here, when I click on these tabs, it, it changes between those. Here I have some brushes. Here's the, some of the, the clone source options. This is These are text options for the character and for the paragraphs, uh, so you can um, adjust different options in the paragraph and adjust options in the characters. These are advanced, pretty advanced tools to use for typography and uh, they require whole lessons uh, on their own. Uh, you can do some styles, create styles and then save styles and apply them to whole blocks of text and these are character styles and then we have down here some tool presets. Uh, I want to want to point out a certain button right here, this thing right here. If you have a um, a drawing pad, a, a pad that comes the, a kind of in place of a mouse, uh, a, a tablet thing that you can use with hook up to your computer. A lot of times those are pressure sensitive, and so you can press harder to make harder, darker drawing, or lighter to make it lighter. This just enables that. All right, now right here we have the the panes right here. If I go to window and say I want to have uh, see the options. See, see these things, this pane for brushes, brush presets. It has all these brush presets that are nice to have. These are something you should probably play around with. I can hide the brushes. So if you go to Window, you can hide or show just about anything on here. Notice that uh, the tools that I have over here on the left, uh, where are they? Oh, tools right there, sorry. I can hide the tools or show them again just by doing that. I can also hide my tool. Oops. I can also hide my tool options. So if I go to options, notice the options hide right there, and I can just go to the tools. I like to have my options visible because I use those options quite a bit. Uh, over here we have layers. Uh, this is probably the most important pane over here on the right side. P A N E. Um, so when I when I open up an uh, an, an image and then I start want to start working with it. I usually duplicate these image. You can do that by just dragging it down here or doing a keyboard shortcut of Control J. I like to think of it as duplicate instead of duplicate. Um, if I want to create a new layer that's 
uh, like a that would be like a plain sh uh, like a clear sheet of plastic on which I can draw. I can do that. So I can just draw right here, color all that in. And notice on this layer that little squiggles appear. I can make that appear and disappear by hiding that layer. Um, I can delete layers by dragging it down here, or I can hit delete with my keyboard and it deletes the layer. Um, I'll do that. I can drag it, like I said, down here. And then I have these buttons right down here that lets me um, do different things, create a mask. We'll learn about masks, create fills and adjustment layers, and create a new group. You can group layers. And so working with layers is very important. Also, these blending modes, you can blend uh, layers together, making different looks on them. Um, and these are all these different blending modes. I'm not going to talk much about those right there. But I want you to be aware of all these things in the interface. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is down here at the bottom. Uh, it gives you document information. If I click on that, it I can click on um, lots of different things here to figure out, to, to look at uh, information about each one of these things. Like this is 8 bits per whatever, 8 BPC. I don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. But these have, it tells me how much I'm using on my scratch disk. That means that's an area on your memory that uh, it uses as a uh, kind of a hard drive. Uh, but it's not really a hard drive. But it's, it makes it so you can access information faster. So Photoshop behaves, works faster. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to show you right now. Uh, uh, we have some work to do in the next lesson.